Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with another brand new PNSO release as the Baryonyx has finally hit my doorstep. And you can see it does look pretty cool. Again, I have heard some people stating they're not a big fan of the paint apps, but I never trust promo images anymore. I wait until I see the figure in person to truly judge how nice the paint apps look. So we'll be able to figure that out here in just a moment. But I will say the figure overall looks really cool. You can see the uh, name of the Baryonyx and the species, of course, and you can also see the PNSO logo up here on the top. You've got a nice shot there of the head sculpt of the Baryonyx. And then if you turn it over here to the side, another random shot of it kind of walking toward us. And then here on the front or on the opposite side, you can just see an image of the figure again. So let's pop the box open and check it out. So included, of course, we have our PNSO stand like we usually do. They always have your back just in case the dinosaur starts to experience any balancing issues we also have a poster included which i am certainly intrigued to see so let's pop the poster open and see what we're dealing with oh that's a very cool baryonyx so let's go ahead and bring the camera up just a little bit to see that and then try to readjust it so the light's not drowning it out there you go you can see it looks really nice i actually would have really quite preferred that color scheme on the baryonyx that we have here because it is a really nice looking color scheme filled with lots of colors but looking very natural at the same time so super cool poster as always and then we have our PNSO booklet, and the booklet always includes some fun stuff. You've got a nice silhouette right away, that as soon as we open it, we see that. But you'll find very, actually, it's the same image we just had on the poster, but you'll find really cool images contained within, again, giving you a nice visual of what that cool paint scheme looked like. And then as you move through, odds are we'll probably find some uh, images. There's a nice shot of the skull, but usually there's like some dino toy photography and stuff like that in here. Not finding as much in this one as I would expect. You can see another really cool image there of the Baryonyx. Maybe I just moved too far past it and I missed it. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, I'm really excited to read it. Definitely looks like it's actually got a lot of really cool original artwork and stuff as usual when it comes to PNSO inside. So definitely excited to give this a read once the review is over. Let's move that stand out of the way. And then we've got our Baryonyx itself. So let's go ahead and stand this up, see if it stands okay. It does not. I was just leaning it too far forward, I guess. Nope, now it fell on its face. So maybe we're going to have some balancing issues with this one. It looks like actually the foot might have warped in transit on mine. So I did have it standing for a minute there. Yeah, I don't know. It does not seem like it wants to stand. That is one of the problems when you get, you know, kind of uh, more dynamic poses and stuff like that for the dinosaurs. It does at times become a little bit of an issue when it comes to the figure standing. But I do appreciate, as always, any... Well, it just fell over again. But any company that tries something a little bit different, tries to give us something a little fresh. We're going to break the stand out here because, again, it's not standing too well for me out of the box i will of course once the review is over i'll try to well let's see if i can get it in a good spot there we go i'll try to get a little uh hot water cold water trick going and see if i can fix this baryonyx up a little bit and see if we can get it standing but there is the baryonyx again right out of the packaging and it does look really cool i'm surprised at how kind of soft the patterning is on it though i will say like the patterning is uh a lot more subtle than it looked on the prototype and a lot more subtle than I was actually expecting. So that's, you know, something, I guess. But overall, it does still look like a really cool Baryonyx. Definitely a fun looking figure. So let's jump to a closer look and we'll check it out a little more thoroughly. So starting up here at the head sculpt of the Baryonyx, you can see there is definitely some really nice fine detail as well as some impressive paintwork in this area because you can see a good bit of paint variation, a good bit of color variation for the face of the Baryonyx and considering it's a pretty small figure like you can see the head there within my fingertip I think gives you a pretty good idea of how small it is. So again the fact that I can see numerous variations of color with really smooth transitions is pretty impressive. It also looks like we have a light wash there on the tip of the snout highlighting the scale detail right there. You can see of course we've got an articulated jaw. You can also see the nice hook in the jaw for the Baryonyx. The teeth are all sculpted individually it seems like for the most part. They are super small teeth like the teeth on the lower jaw are so tiny but you can see for the most part like that paintwork isn't half bad for those teeth like 
considering they're super tiny there's so much room for error there and they still did a pretty good job of painting them you can see the teeth on the upper jaw as well are painted pretty decently for the most part as you move around the front you can see same thing again as you move over to the opposing side considering this is painted by a factory and they're so small i think the paintwork is actually pretty impressive considering the super tiny size of those teeth but you can see the inside of the mouth also sports a nice pinkish tone kind of like a mixture of pinks and purples there is a uh, wash it seems like in there you can kind of see the tongue and everything and then as you get on to the inside of the mouth, eh, it's going to be a little hard to pick up on because that mouth is so small. But there is some decent detail in there as well. And that jaw seems to work pretty nicely. And uh, as we move up there, you can see again the crest of the Baryonyx also looks nice. Not really much in the way of flashy color or anything in the face of this one. But you can see a little bit of a lighter tone, kind of like a light orangish brown moving up there toward the, you know, basically from the snout, this little area here of the snout up into the crest before tapering away. You can also see we've got like an orangish eye or you could if my camera would focus on it with a nice black pupil. Also a nice gloss coat shining right there. And not only the eye but kind of in the eye socket area as well has a little bit of a shine to it. And you can see again same thing over here. Overall I think that's a pretty nice head sculpt with some pretty darn decent paint apps for it. As you move back here into the neck you can see the ear of the Baryonyx and you can also see again the skin texture looks absolutely phenomenal moving back. Like they have done a great job of sculpting out the fine detail of the figure. You can also see like some orangish tones right here moving down along the neck. You can also see a lighter tone here for the underside of the neck and throat of the Baryonyx. Really nice, very vibrant skin texture there as well. The transitions for the paintwork is super smooth. And again, you can see like a greenish tone following along the upper part of the Baryonyx. And then you have like this really light, very subtle patterning. Like it's even more light and subtle as you move down into the body. Like here in the back, you almost can't even barely notice it until you get it in a nice light. And it is really smooth and naturally applied. I can definitely give them credit for that, but I'm just impressed at how soft the patterning is. You can see the same thing here in the neck on the opposing side. Obviously the Baryonyx is turning its head toward us, which you can see from up above. So you see a little like cluster of creases in the skin and everything right here as you move back from the head into the neck and that looks nice. Again, that's exactly what I would expect to see. You see the same variation of color moving down. As you move down into the body, you can see the patterning starts to kind of, you know, widen and extend down into the stomach a little further. We have more of that kind of like it's like a red-orange tone that we have here showing up. Really smooth application of that paint, though. And there's also like a hint of a yellowish tone in the stomach as well. Leading down into the arms, you can see the muscle definition, the scale detail again looking really good. You've got some uh, grayish tones for the hands as you move down. You can see like scoots moving down the fingers. Again, it looks like we have like that light wash that's been applied to the hands as well. You have a brownish tone for the fingernails right there as well. As you move up into the stomach, you've got some creasing in the back of the stomach there right in front of the thighs. The dinosaur kind of takes a step forward and is wrinkling that area of the skin. Moving up a little bit higher, we can take note to the hip bone there kind of protruding from the skin, the spinal column moving along the back and continuing to have that very subtle striping moving down. We've got the muscle definition very nicely displayed in the thigh area as well as again, lots of really nice looking scale detail moving down. And then as you move down a little further, you've got the knee right there. Big bulging calf muscle, super smooth transitions between the greens and the lighter tone of the back of the thigh as well. And then you move down into the foot sculpt, you get some scoots moving down the front of the foot, down into the toes. You can see how the toes are picking up off of the ground as the dinosaur is taking a step. Super bird-like as far as the way that the toes look as it's taking that step. Again, a brownish tone for the nails, and you can see that light wash has been applied down here in the feet of the Baryonyx, just like we usually see quite often on PNS figures which I actually am a huge huge fan of I really love that when they do that but you can also see dew claws are sculpted and painted over there on the opposing leg you can see it at least as you move up you again have that kind of like red orange tone reappear back here behind the thigh and it starts to kind of follow along the tail as you move out but you still have the greenish tone moving along the top and again that's striping and it really becomes a pretty obvious striping here a little bit more intense but still by no means is it actually intense as you move out 
about. It's just a little less subtle as far as the application here goes, but still really quite nice. I definitely like the way that it's applied. And we've got all sorts of really nice looking scale detail and skin texture moving out. Nice curvature to the tail as well. Again, just showing a nice elegance, I think, to the figure. Moving along the underside, you see the lighter tones. You can also see the cloaca present right there as you move along the underside of the figure. And, uh, it's honestly hard to tell if there's a dark wash on this one. Kind of looks like there might be a very, very subtle dark wash. There is a light gray for the undersides of the hands, which you can see right there. But that's one thing that I think that this figure might be a little bit lacking would be the wash that PNSO has been consistently using. They've been like perfectly applying a wash to their figures for quite some time. And although they very clearly used washes like here in the hands and stuff, you can really see how those scales are just popping in the best way possible with those grayish tones and that light wash they've applied. I don't see the actual dark wash quite as obvious. Like it kind of looks like it might be there, but uh, if it is there, it's not as nicely applied as we usually see. But as you move through the course of the opposing side, of course, you're going to see the head turning away from us. The arm is in a little bit of a different position, and this leg is planted over here. You can see the foot sculpt again looks really quite nice. Very, very bird-like. Same style of paint again with the darker gray and then the light wash that they've applied. And then again, you lead out into the tail. You've got the nice curve to the tail as you lead out. But overall, even if it's not the flashiest color scheme that PNSO has come up with so far, it is still a pretty nice natural looking berry and a very nicely sculpted figure as well. As far as a size goes, for a length from the snout to the tail, you were looking at about nine, I would say about nine and a half inches or around 24 centimeters. And then for a height, you were looking at right around three and a half inches or nine centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack, Colovasaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the Collect A human being next to our PNSO, Baryonyx. And you can see it's a fairly small figure. It's by no means large at all, but it's also a really nice, conveniently sized Baryonyx. So if you are looking for a Baryonyx and you don't have a whole lot of room in your collection, this would be a really good one to add because it's not going to take up much room at all. And then to give you a really good idea of the size, if you happen to have purchased the How Long Good Baryonyx, you can see the PNSO version pretty much the exact same size. So it is pretty cool to have these two so similar in size because they honestly like blend together really nicely. You could create some really cool, you know, dioramas or photography and stuff like that by including both of these figures. We also have the Mojo Fun Baryonyx, one of them at the very least, and you can see the PNSO version is a little bit smaller than the Mojo Mojo version. We've also got the PNSO Sukamimus next to the Baryonyx, which you can see the Sukamimus is a good bit larger than the Baryonyx. Definitely, you know, a good bit longer for sure, which you can see when we kind of move back a little bit. Definitely has a good bit of size on the Baryonyx. We've also got one of my all-time favorites from PNSO. We have the Gorgosaurus here next to the Baryonyx, which clearly the Gorgosaurus is a little bit bigger. As well as the drop dead gorgeous Despletosaurus from PNSO, showing you that again, just a little bit bigger than the Baryonyx. We've got the Megalosaurus as well, which again, very clearly is a little bit smaller this time than our Baryonyx. And then the final comparison I have is the Saurophaganax from PNSO. And this one I really wanted to bring in because of how similar these figures look. Like the color schemes are very similar. They almost have like the same tones, but a little bit different. And they also actually have very similar poses to them where they're both kind of stepping up off of the ground. The Baryonyx obviously has the foot out in front of it stepping up off of the ground, whereas the Saurophaganax has the foot kind of like back behind it a little ways, but very similar uh, poses and kind of similar color schemes. So this brand new PNSO Baryonyx is a pretty fun figure, but it's definitely not one of the best that they've had to offer so far. I feel like, you know, it is still really nice, especially for a Baryonyx. It's probably one of the best looking Baryonyx figures that are on the market right now. When it comes to the fine detail, you know, PNSO is really hard to compete with. They always have some of the highest quality detail on their figures showing every ounce of movement and everything that you would want to see 
on their dinosaur figures. Same can be said for this Baryonyx. It is gorgeous as far as the sculpt goes, and even if the pose is pretty similar to the Saurophaganax, it's a nice naturalistic pose. I could definitely see some really cool dino toy photography being taken with this Baryonyx. The thing that I think some people have had an issue with would be the paint apps. Like, they're not quite as nice as what we usually see from PNSO. I just feel like, you know, it doesn't have the wash and stuff that we usually see, and it's not quite as flashy, which they're not always flashy. I feel like PNSO is always naturalistic, but it's just, you know, a little bit more like softer, I would say, as far as the colors and paint apps go compared to normal modern PNSO. But that being said, it is still a really nicely painted figure. Like even if the patterning and the coloration as a whole is a little bit softer than we're used to, like it's still gorgeous. The transitions are really smooth. The paint apps are also really smooth as far as the application goes. It all looks like body color. Nothing on it looks like, uh, you know, paint on a figure. It looks as natural honestly as it can get so i feel like the tones of color chosen are also really nice and the orange like the red orange tone that we have moving through the body does add a nice element of flashiness to the figure on top of everything so even if it's not quite as beautifully painted as some more recent pnso figures it is still a really nice baryonyx and definitely one that i am super happy to now have adding into my collection so if you are interested in grabbing one for yourself you can grab it through the link that i will include in the description from PNSO on their Amazon or AliExpress store. So make sure you check those links. Go grab this if you want it and like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.